Jesus. All right, we're on Luke chapter 16. Jesus taught his disciples using this story. There once, no, there was once a very rich man who hired a manager to run his business and oversee all his wealth. But soon a rumor spread that the manager was wasting his master's money. So the master called him in and said, Is it true that you are mismanaging my estate? You need to provide me with a complete audit of everything you oversee for me. I've decided to dismiss you. The manager thought, Now what am I going to do? I'm finished here. I can't hide what I've, been, what I've done. And I'm too proud to beg to get my job back. Oh, man. I see a couple things already. Pride really sucks. Ah. Uh, I wonder if this is symbolically speaking of all the prideful fake ministers on YouTube, even including me. I'll throw myself in that list. Full of pride, full of arrogancy, thinking I'm better than everybody else. And uh, maybe God's done. Yeah. Maybe it's time for a younger generation to rise up and grab the reins of just flying through the heavens with Jesus Christ because we're too full of ourselves. We have too many opinions. We're better than them. Ha 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 ha. I'm too proud to beg to get my job back. Listen, we can't do anything without Christ. Here, let me read you this prophetic word before I go on. This encouraged me. I read this thing like five times. I was really at a low place. And this guy, I, I, my Facebook friends are like Isaiah and Ezekiel. Like I have friends like of that caliber. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. I'm just thankful. <laughs> so here's this prophetic word. I thought, at first I'm like, this is for the body. I have set before you the path of life. And you are walking upon it obediently and following my voice with every step taken. My word is existing in your mind and in your heart as well. You not only know it, but it radiates from your being and touches others who need its life-giving essence to bring them from a state of death to a state of life. This part right here. Never trust in your own abilities to carry out the mission I have called you to, but trust in my touch upon your life. I have called you, I have qualified you, and I have empowered you to do all things through me. Daily, your eyes will look upon the fields that are white for harvest, and you will go forth, touch, and win souls for the kingdom. I remind you that my hands have touched your tongue and placed my anointing there, and so my word will go forth from it with power and authority. As my word burns in your heart like a fire that cannot be quenched, I treasure and hold with honor your life, your heart and your desire to serve me with all you are. And I will speak life over your efforts and you will be blessed from heaven's open window as you carry out what I have commissioned you to accomplish, your heavenly father. That word just, it's, it was for me, it was for the body, you know, it's, it had so much life in it. I even showed my wife that. She got blasted in the anointing. So I knew it was God. <laughs> How do you know it's God? By the anointing on it. By the glory. Anyways. That's out there. I, that's a word for you. Just take it and run with it. But here we're talking about this uh, mismanager. Maybe he thought the power came from him. Instead of the power coming from God. I don't know. The manager thought, now what am I going to do? I'm finished here. I can't hide what I've done, and I'm too proud to beg for my to get my job back. 
I have an idea that will secure my future. It will win me favor and secure friends who can take care of me and help me when I get fired. So the dishonest manager hatched his scheme. He went to everyone who owed his master money one by one. And he asked them, how much do you owe my master? One debtor owed $20,000. So he said to him, let me see your bill. Pay me now and we'll settle for 20% less. The clever manager snatched, scratched out the original amount owed and reduced it by 20%. And to another who owed $200,000, he said, pay me now and we'll reduce your f bill by 50%. And the clever manager scratched out the original amount owed and reduced it by half. Even though his master was defrauded, when he found out about the shrewd way this manager had feathered his own nest, he congratulated the clever scoundrel for what he'd done to lay up for his future needs. Before we go on, Jesus says something about that, but how do we store up for our future needs? An earthly mind will be like, well, we need money, we need material things, we need, uh, we need uh, followers on Twitter, or whatever, who cares? Or someone with wisdom would build their lives upon the rock, which is the rock of Christ, which is revelation. Build up your spirit, man. Build up your life upon... The spirit of wisdom, revelation, knowledge of God, of God, from God, you know, understanding, build your life upon his wisdom, his counsel, his might, his power, build your life upon the fear of the Lord so you even have wisdom. You know, out of the fear of the Lord comes wisdom, but out of the fear of the devil comes stupidity. <laughs> two different fears, two different rewards. <laughs> You fear God, you get wisdom. You fear the devil, you get stupid. <laughs> the spirit of stupid. <laughs> uh, just that we haven't been made perfect in love. That's why we fear the devil and stuff like that. Uh, I'd rather just fear God and walk in wisdom and the bliss and the peace. Because wisdom is first peaceable. Walking in the peace of wisdom. Not just a piece of wisdom, the peace... The peace of wisdom. Not a piece of wisdom. The peace of wisdom. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm sure it does. Someone out there probably has a lick of wisdom. Let's keep on reading. Jesus continued. Remember this. The sons of darkness are more shrewd than the sons of light in their interactions with others. It is important that you use the wealth of this world to demonstrate your friendship with God by winning friends and blessing others. Oh, wow, that makes so much more sense. Use the wealth of this world to show the king. Then, when this world fails and falls apart, your generosity will provide you with an eternal reward. Verse 10, the one who manages the little he has been given with faithfulness and integrity, will be promoted and trusted with greater responsibilities. With responsibilities that are out of this world. <laughs> but those who cheat with the little they have been given will not be considered trustworthy to receive more. Oh, man. So I guess we've got to be faithful with the little we've been given. We'll get more. If you have not handled the riches of this world with integrity, why should you be trusted with the eternal treasures of the spiritual world? And if you've not been proven faithful with that which belongs to another, why should you be given wealth of your own? It is impossible for a person to serve two masters at the same time. You'll be forced to love one and reject the other. One master will be despised and the other will have your loyal devotion. It's no different with God and the wealth of this world. You must enthusiastically love one and defiantly reject the other. Definitively. <laughs> defiantly. <laughs> it's just a big word, okay? 
definitively reject the other. Now, the Jewish religious leaders who were listening to Jesus were lovers of money. They laughed at what he said and mocked his teachings. You'll see that a lot. I see that a lot, actually. The mocking spirit. And one time I, I even had this dream. <laughs> man, it, it shocked me, man. I was like, you know, I had my pampers strapped on tight. These are the deluxe version of baby Christian diapers. And I would go out to the streets and I would just like try to win all the lost. I don't care if you got tattoos and guns and, or carrying a sword. You're going to find out about Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but uh, I was learning. And uh, when I come home this night and I lay down, I go to sleep. <clears throat> and all of a sudden I'm on this beach. I'm at this beach and uh, there's, a, there's a figure standing by the water. So I go over there and uh, I was going to go tell him about Jesus or something, right? And I... And I, and I go up to the person standing by the edge of the water there on this beach, and it's dark. The atmosphere is dark, and it was like purplish. Like I had a purple hue to it. It's like a sunset or sun rising. I couldn't tell with this purple hue. And this guy turns around, and it was, uh, it was, a, it was a mocking spirit. It was not a man. It, it, was, it wasn't a person. It was a demon spirit. And I looked at this thing. I'm like, ooh. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And you know what it said back to me? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. I was like, what? I took a step back. Get out of here in the name of Jesus. And it said, get out of here in the name of Jesus. You know, it was mocking me and it was mimicking me. It was repeating what it shocked me. I was like, oh, so just rebuking things. <laughs> My theology shattered. <laughs> How do I get rid of this thing? Help God, you know? <laughs> and then later on, I realized it's the anointing that drives out the devils, not just saying the name of Jesus. I've tried casting devils out saying the name of Jesus without the anointing. It took like over an hour. This poor girl screaming, ripping Bibles. You know, it, it was crazy. And it wasn't until, okay, like we're praying in tongues, we're praying in tongues, doing some worship. Well, well my, like, the other people, are, they're laying hands on this girl, trying to cast out a demon of lust was one of them. I can't remember the other spirits. I just remember the demon of lust because it jumped on me. I looked at this girl's leg and I lusted after her leg. I'm like, whoa, what is that? And I'm like, oh, that's not me. It's the demon of lust. <laughs> you know, basic wisdom, 103, 102, 101, whatever. I don't know. You figure it out as you go, you know, <laughs> and uh, you learn how to cast out devils through experience <laughs> and it comes by the anointing because I screamed at her, get out of here, get out of her in the name of Jesus. And it didn't leave until the anointing showed up when we prayed in tongues. And when we, when I worshiped and we came back and drove the devil out and then we told the girl to stand up and, uh, how do you feel? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> said, uh, well, the first time it wasn't fully out when we when we stopped, and then uh, the, the screaming and stuff, the Bible throwing and uh, happened more, and then we stopped again after worship, and then I was like, "How are you? Are you there? You know, we're trying to talk to the person." I'm like, yes, I, I feel I feel different, and I said, "Okay, well, whenever you cast out a devil, he has to be replaced with the Holy Spirit. So we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, and." Uh, so just put your hands up and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. And she did. And, and then I saw the tears rolling down her face. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we got one. <laughs> that was my first time ever casting out a devil. Took like over an hour and I lost my voice from screaming. Uh, I baptized her in spit. And, uh, but we finally got the devil out. And sometimes you might run into this mocking, mimicking spirit. These are religious things. They laughed at what he said and mocked his teachings. It's this mocking spirit that comes. It just has, it's full of pride. It's disgusting. And it cannot learn anything. If, the per, if it's coming through the person, you're not dealing with a person. You're dealing with a mocking spirit. So Jesus addressed them directly. You... 
always want to look spiritual in the eyes of others, but you have forgotten the eyes of God, which see what in, is inside of you. What was inside of them? Demons. <laughs> Jesus knew what was inside of mankind. It was the fallen nature. But the fallen nature attracts those demons. That's why Jesus came down to bring us up so that we can get that junk out of our lives when we're crucified with him. If you're crucified with Christ, it's no longer you living anymore. So that fallen nature has fallen off. And so you can walk in the divine nature of Christ. But every day you can make a choice. Uh, you know, this person cut me off in traffic. I need to go bury up the old man for a second. Just, just, just for 30 seconds. Then you run back over to the coffin. Pull up the dust. The big dust storm is flying. Come on. We gotta go. Give this person a piece of your mind. Which is our mind. For 30 seconds. <sighs> you know. <laughs> no, leave the dead man in the coffin. <clears throat> you don't need the dead man. You, want, you don't want to give them a piece of your mind. You got to give them a piece of the mind of Christ to break their mind off the fallen nature mind. Where am I going with this? What is going on? Okay, so Jesus addressed these guys, direct them. Jesus addressed them directly. You've forgotten the eyes of God, which see what's inside you. The very things that you approve and applaud and uh what? The very things that you approve of and applaud are the things God despises. The law of Moses and the revelation of the prophets have prepared you for the arrival of the kingdom realm announced by John. And now, when it's when this wonderful news of God's kingdom realm is preached, God's our people's hearts burn with extreme passion to press in and receive it. Heaven and earth will disintegrate before even the smallest detail of the word of God will fail or lose its power. It is wrong for you to divorce. Oh wait, it is wrong for you to divorce your wife so you can marry another. That is adultery. You know that the, uh, the adulterers have their part, which is in the lake of fire, which is torment day and night. It is not love, which the lying pastors have taught you. The fire of God? <laughs> no. It is where they are tormented day and night, the scriptures say. I don't know where we get these doctrines of demons other than Ruth, not Ruth, but Jude told us, warned us about in the last days, people will depart from the truth to listen to like these tickling ear sermons where God is just love. There's no wrath. There's no judgment seat of Christ. There's no punishment for sin. Jesus took it all. Did he? Did he? Did he take all the sin? Then why is that pastor committing adultery? Well, he's once saved, always saved. He can do what he wants. Yeah, he can do what he wants. But adulterers find themselves in the lake of fire, which is the second death. You know, and it's... What, what is that? There's fire in brimstone? You ever try to inhale brimstone? That's not very loving. Go inhale some brimstone. That, say, this is the love of God. <laughs> It's just stupidity what's out there. T tell you the truth. Like, I don't even... Uh, I don't know where... They, I know where these doctrines come from. But I don't know how, know how someone could believe that. They actually have to be willingly deceived. That is adultery. And when you take that one you have lusted after as your wife and contribute to the breakup of her marriage, you are once again guilty of adultery. I'm not mad about it. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm actually quite glad. You should be glad too that someone will tell you the truth because they're not taking tithes and offerings and they're not moved by tithes and offerings to please your flesh and to deceive you to get a tithe and an offering. I have nothing to lose or to gain but, my, but friends in heaven. That's the only reason I make these videos. It's not to make myself look good like I <laughs> well, who cares what I look like 
It's like, can we just focus on Jesus and the truth that sets us free so we can walk in the freedom and that all these fake things can be just washed into the sea of forgetfulness and drowned? I just want to walk with the King of glory, don't you? Well, he loves truth. How about you? The rich man and Lazarus. Jesus continued. There once was a very rich man who had the finest things imaginable, living every day and enjoying his life of opulent luxury. Outside the gate of his mansion was a poor beggar named Lazarus. He lay there every day covered with boils and all the neighborhood dogs would come and lick his open sores. The only food he had to eat was the garbage that the rich man threw away. One day poor Lazarus died and the angels of God came and escorted his spirit into paradise. <clears throat> the day came that the rich man also died in hell. But there is no hell. <laughs> I just shake my head. Wag my head. <laughs> the King James. I wagged my head when I hear their opinions. You can just feel the demons on their on their words too. There's no life. There's there's no prince of peace. There's no fear of God. So there's no wisdom. That's why there's no peace. Anyways, let's keep reading this and see what let the Bible speak for itself. The day came that the rich man also died in hell. He looked up from his torment and saw Abraham in the distance. And Lazarus the beggar was standing beside him in the glory. Yeah, he's, he's not in the love of God, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> so the rich... So the rich man shouted, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in the water and come and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames of fire. No, 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 no. I'm in bliss in these flames of fire, of hell. I see these idiots. They say, I wish that you had experienced the lake of fire. They are so stupid. Why are you cursing people? It's because you are completely deceived. You're wishing that people would experience this? I can't help it. They just don't have true wisdom or knowledge from God that has that peace on it. They just hear some pastor say this one thing and then they run with it because they say, well, since the pastor said it, it must be true and Jesus is wrong. <laughs> but Abraham responded, my friend, don't you remember while you were alive, you had all you desired surrounded in luxury while Lazarus had nothing. Now Lazarus is in the comforts of paradise and you are in agony. Besides, between us is a huge chasm that cannot be bridged, keeping anyone from crossing from one realm to the other, even if he wanted to. So the rich man said, Then let me ask you, Father Abraham, to please send Lazarus to my relatives. Tell him to witness to my five brothers and warn them not to end up where I am in this place of love. Not to end up where I am in this place of torment. Abraham replied, They've already had enough warning. They have the teachings of Moses and the prophets, and they must obey them. But what if they're not listening, the rich man added. If someone from the dead were to go and warn them, they would surely repent. Do we know anyone who has come from the dead to warn us? Actually, he's warning us in this story right now. Abraham said to him, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither would they believe if, even if someone was raised from the dead. That's thus saith the word of God. <clears throat> 